Millennium TV, bridging communities worldwide. We broadcast diverse international content from Europe, Asia, Africa, and now right here in the USA. Watch us via Roku on your smart TV. Submit your own content to 1530 Entertainment LLC at gmail.com. Download the Millennium TV app from the App Store to stream our shows anywhere, anytime. Millennium TV. Hello and welcome to Millennium News TV 24-7. My name is Todd David Goldfinger. Today is March 2nd, 2022. And here are the news. Addressing a concerned nation, an anxious world, President Joe Biden vowed in his first State of the Union address Tuesday night to check Russian aggression, aggression in Ukraine, to tame soaring U.S. inflation and deal with the fading but still dangerous coronavirus. Biden declared that he and all members of Congress, whatever their political differences, are joined with an unwavering resolve that freedom will always triumph over tyranny. End quote. He asked lawmakers crowding the House chamber to stand and salute the Ukrainians as he began his speech. They stood and cheered. It was a notable show of unity after a long year of bitter acrimony between Biden's Democratic coalition and the Republican opposition. Aiming to build on momentum from the speech, Biden will held, head to Wisconsin, Wisconsin on Wednesday in an effort to show Americans that his domestic agenda is working. His vice president and cabinet members will fan out around the country to amplify the message. Biden heads again to an old bridge set to be repaired, increasingly a symbol for his administration, tangible evidence of the nation that he's working to update. This time, it's a wrought iron bridge that connects Duluth, Minnesota, and Superior, Wisconsin, across the St. Louis Bay. The bridge, the bridge will, will be placed, placed during, uh, using funds from the massive infrastructure plan signed into law last year, a signature piece of bipartisan legislation and proof, Biden says, that the GOP and Democrats can still work together. Next news. Republican Ge Governor Greg Abbott will face Democrat Beto O'Rourke after voters in Texas opened what could be a lengthy, bruising primary 
seized and poised to reshape political power from state capitals to Washington. Both easily won their party's nomination for governor on Tuesday. Abbott is now in a commanding position as he seeks a third term, beginning his run with more than $50 million and campaigning on a strongly conservative agenda. In America's largest Republican state, that leaves O'Rourke facing an uphill battle, an uphill effort to recapture the magic of his 2018 Senate campaign when he nearly ousted Ted Cruz. This group of people, and then some, are going to make me the first Democrat to be governor of the state of Texas since 1994, O'Rourke told his supporters in Fort Worth, where in 2018, he flipped Texas's largest red county. This is on us. This is on all of us. They want to keep Texas on the extraordinary path of opportunity that we have provided over the past eight years, end quote. His campaign said in a statement, the GOP primary for state attorney general was more competitive. Former President Donald Trump's endorsement wasn't enough to prevent incumbent Ken Paxton from being forced into a May runoff. He'll face Texas Land Commissioner George P. Bush, the nephew of one president and grandson of another. Another, after neither captured a majority of the votes cast. While Paxton won more votes than Bush on Tuesday, his failure to win outright could raise questions about the power of Trump's endorsement as he seeks to reshape the party in his image in other primaries later this year. Next news. Supreme Court nominee Ketanji Brown Jackson will meet with congressional leaders on Wednesday, taking her first steps toward confirmation as Senate Democrats and the White House are pushing for a swift timeline. Jackson will meet Wednesday morning with Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, Democrat from New York, and Senate Republican Leader Mitch McConnell, Republican Kentucky. She will then visit with Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Dick Durbin, Democrat from Illinois, and Iowa Senator Chuck Grassley. The top Republican on the Judiciary panel later in the day. She'll continue to make the customary rounds to Senators' offices in, in the, the coming, coming days as the Judiciary panel prepares for hearings expected in mid March. Senate, Senate Democrats are hoping they can vote on her confirmation to replace retiring Justice Stephen Breyer by mid April. If confirmed, Jackson would be the first black female justice in the court's more than 200 year history. Breyer has said he won't leave the bench until his until this summer when the court session is over. The Democrats are taking no chances in case there's any shift in their narrow 50 to 50 majority. Vice President Kamala Harris provides the deciding vote. Next news. Republican leaders in Congress are touring over what to do with 
Republican Marjorie Taylor Greene. After the Congresswoman spoke at a weekend event organized by a white nationalist who marveled over Russia's invasion of Ukraine as the crowd erupted in chants of Putin! End quotes. House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy called the Congresswoman's speech on the same stage unacceptable. Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell, McConnell said, There is no place in the Republican Party for white supremacists. End quote. Yet, it's unclear whether Green will face any further reprimand or rebuke for what is now an ongoing pattern of startling behavior. McCarthy had previously suggested that Georgia Congresswoman, who is now barred by Democrats from committees, would enjoy a promotion if Republicans take control of the House. This may be a chance to burn out the cancer of the Republican Party. Those that are, you know, Putin sympathetic, said Representative Adam Kinsinger, Republican, Illinois. A former military pilot who broke with his party over the Trump presidency. Oh, yeah. But he worries that McCarthy and other GOP leaders will stop short of kicking Green out of the party. He won't because she has power. Let's be honest. But I'm embarrassed by it. End quotes. The scrutiny over the congresswoman, who remains an outlier on Capitol Hill, comes as most of Congress is largely unified in its condemnation of Russian President Vladimir Putin and its support of Ukraine. Ahead of President Joe Biden's first State of the Union address, the invasion has proven to be a rare moment of common ground amid Democrats and Republicans as the U.S. defends the Western-style democracy. We're going to take a short break from the Daily English News and Millennium News TV 24-7. Please stay with with us. us. Thank you. Millennium TV, bridging communities worldwide. We broadcast diverse international content from Europe, Asia, Africa, and now right here in the USA. Watch us via Roku on your smart TV. Submit your own content to 1530 Entertainment LLC at gmail.com. Download the Millennium TV app from the App Store to stream our shows anywhere, anytime. Millennium TV. Welcome back to Millennium News TV 24-7. Here's today's news. As Russia's top diplomat during the invasion of Ukraine, Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov is embodying the Kremlin's defiant posture with a mixture of toughness and sarcasm. While President Vladimir Putin single-handedly shapes 
the country's foreign policy. Lavrov delivers Moscow's message with a bluntness uncharacteristic of a diplomat. In the role for nearly 18 years, the 71-year-old Lavrov has seen relations with the West shift from nearly friendly to openly hostile, plummeting to a catastrophic new low with Russia's war against Ukraine. The invasion prompted the European Union to freeze the assets of both Putin and Lavrov, among others. An unprecedented blow to Moscow's pride. Lavrov's tenure as foreign minister is second only to that of Soviet foreign minister Andrei Gromyko who was in office for 28 years, like Gromyko, who was nim nicknamed Mr. Niet, Mr. No. Lavrov has come to represent the uncompromising face of Kremlin foreign policy via vis-a-vis -vis the West. He doesn't mince words when defending what he sees as Moscow's interests. And that style must appeal to the tough talking Russian president. In 2008, Lavrov famously responded to a reprimand from then British Foreign Secretary David Miliband by snapping, Who are you to expletive? Lecture me. End quote. Next news. Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds delivering the Republican rebuttal to President Joe Biden's State of the Union Address Tuesday. Painted the picture of a country in the grip of several crises as she hammered the president's leadership, notably on the world stage. Reynolds depicted Biden's year in office as having sent us back to fraught times more than 40 years ago as she made the case for the alternative approach of Republicans hoping to capture control of Congress in this year's midterm elections. Instead of moving America forward, it feels like President Biden and his party have sent us back in time to the late 70s and early 80s when runaway inflation was hammering families a violent wave. The crime wave was crashing on all cities and the Soviet army was trying to redraw the world map. Reynolds said, uh, Republicans have hinted for months at two prongs of the three-sided broadside. But Reynolds' critique of Biden for the Russian invasion of Ukraine signaled the party's commitment to casting Biden and Democrats as weak world leaders. Compounding their withering criticism of the administration's handling of the chaotic U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan, Westfall. Next news. Russia renewed its assault Wednesday on Ukraine's second largest city in a pounding that lit up the skyline with balls of fire over populated areas, even as both sides said they were ready to resume talks aimed at stopping the new devastating war in Europe. The escalation of attacks on crowded cities followed an initial round of talks between outgunned Ukraine and nuclear power Russia on Monday that resulted in only a promise to meet again. 
it was not clear when new talks might take place or what they would yield. Ukraine's leader earlier said, Russia must stop bombing before another meeting. Seven days into the war, roughly 874,000 people have fled Ukraine. And the UN Refugee Agency warned the number could cross the 1 million mark soon. The overall death toll was not clear. But Ukraine's state emergency service said more than 2,000 civilians have died. It was impossible to verify that claim. Countless others have taken shelter underground as Russia continued its bombardment. Another attack came Wednesday on Kharkiv, a city with a population of about 1.5 million, and a reported strike on a hospital in the country's north. A 40-mile, 64-kilometer convoy of hundreds of Russian tanks and other vehicles advanced slowly to the capital of Kiev, while Russian forces pressed their assault on the strategic southern city of Kherson. Next news. In the dust, debris and the dead lying in Kharkiv's central Freedom Square. Ukrainians on Tuesday saw what might become of other cities if Russia's invasion isn't countered in time. Not long after sunrise, a Russian military strike hit the center of Ukraine's second largest city, badly damaging its symbolic Soviet-era regional administration building. Closed circuit, circuit television, television footage, footage showed a fireball engulfing the street in front of the building. With a few cars rolling out of the building smoke, you cannot watch this. You cannot watch this without crying. A witness said in a video of the aftermath, verified by the Associated Press. An emergency official said the bodies of at least six people who had been pulled from the ruins, and at least 20 other people were wounded. Two bodies lay side by side on the cobblestones near an abandoned car. One was barefoot and wrapped in a blanket. The other, in military collared clothing, had a clenched fist. It wasn't immediately clear what type of weapon was used or how many people were killed. But Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky said there were dozens of casualties. We're going to take a short break from the Daily English News of Millennium News TV 24-7. Please stay with us. Thank you. Millennium TV, bridging communities worldwide. We broadcast diverse international content from Europe, Asia, Africa, and now right here in the USA. Watch us via Roku on your smart TV. Submit your own content to 1530entertainmentllc at gmail.com. Download the Millennium TV app from the App Store to stream our shows anywhere, anytime. Millennium TV.
Welcome back to Millennium News TV 24-7. Here's today's headlines continued. Thick black smoke billowed across the grounds of New Zealand's parliament and sirens blared. On Wednesday, as retreating protesters against coronavirus ma vaccine mandates set fire to tents, mattresses, and chairs. It appeared to be a final act of defiance as police broke up the camp that protesters first set up more than three weeks ago. Police retook control of the parliament grounds, although dozens of protesters remained in nearby streets, some hurling objects at officers. Parliament's once carefully manicured grounds were left scarred. The children slide in ruins. New, New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern said that in planning the operation, police had expected hostility, resistance, and violence. But it was another thing entirely to witness it. I was both angry and also Deeply saddened to see the parliament, your parliament, our parliament, desecrated in that way. And see a children's playground destroyed by a small group of illegal protesters, Ardern said. But, as I say, it's not something that will define New Zealand's response to this pandemic, end quote. Earlier, police wearing riot gear and using pepper spray had moved in on hundreds of people who had been occupying the grounds and surrounding streets. Police efforts in the morning focused on the periphery of the protest before turning to the main camp in the afternoon. It was the most significant use of force to date by authorities against the demonstrators. As they retreated in the afternoon, they tossed objects onto several fires, which police doused with water hoses. Next news. The Biden administration is working on a focused tactical strategy to make certain that cryptocurrency doesn't become a mechanism that Moscow is able to utilize to avert sanctions, according to a senior administration official. The official, who spoke on the condition of anonymity to discuss the yet-to-be-announced move, did not detail an exact timeline for when the new steps on cryptocurrency would be unveiled, but said the area is one of several places that the Biden administration officials are looking to shore up as it looks as it looks to make certain that sanctions on Russia have maximum impact. The officials said past experiences in Iran and Venezuela with sanctions evasions are informing the administration's efforts. Additional export controls and new sanction targets are also expected to be unveiled in the next days and weeks ahead to counter Russian sanction evasion efforts, the official said. Officials have already been on the lookout for the use and creation of front companies and alternative financial institutions that Moscow might try to employ to get around sanctions. Next, Next news. Another damning report into government corruption in, in South, South Africa. Africa. 
has recommended further investigations and the possible prosecution of former President Jacob Zuma, current and former cabinet ministers and senior leaders of the ruling African National Congress Party for allegedly receiving bribes. It's the third report to come from three years of investigations, testimonies, and cross-examination of witnesses and whistleblowers. The inquiry has exposed extensive graft under Zuma at the top levels of government in Africa's most developed economy. The latest report was published Tuesday and has been handled over to President Cyril Ramaphosa in the, okay, it's handed over to him. In the report, Zuma, current ANC chairperson and energy minister, Guida Mantashe and former cabinet minister, Namvula Mokanyane, are among those who allegedly received gratifications from the controversial security company Bosasa, so it could maintain its grasp on state contracts. Some of the bribes came in the form of monthly payments to the Jacob Zuma Foundation and the sponsorship of Zuma's lavish birthday parties. Zuma was president of South Africa from 2009 to 2018 before he was forced to step down by his ANC party amid allegations of corruption, which led to the establishment of the commission to investigate. He is currently standing trial on other corruption charges that are unrelated to the commission. Previous reports from the commission of inquiry have been similar, similarly damning and have accused Zuma and other senior government officials of taking bribes to award lucrative state contracts to other corrupt businessmen. Next, news. Russian nuclear submarines sailed off for drills in the Barents Sea, and mobile missile launchers roamed snow forests Tuesday in, in Siberia, Siberia after President Vladimir Putin ordered his nation's nuclear forces put on high alert over tensions with the West over the invasion of Ukraine. Ukraine. Russia's northern fleet said in a statement that several of its nuclear submarines were involved in exercises designed to, in quotes, train maneuvering in stormy conditions, end quote. But several warships tasked with protecting northwest Russia's Kola Peninsula, where several naval bases are located, would join the maneuvers. In the Irkutsk region of eastern Siberia, units of the strategic missile forces dispersed Yars intercontinental ballistic missile launchers in forests to practice secret deployment. The Defense Military said, Ministry said in a statement. The military didn't say whether the drills were linked to Putin's order on Sunday to put the country's 
nuclear forces on high alert amid Russia's war in Ukraine. It was also unclear whether the exercises represented a change in the country's normal nuclear training activities or posture. We're going to take a short break from the Daily English News of Millennium News TV 24-7. Please stay with us. Thank you. Millennium TV, bridging communities worldwide. We broadcast diverse international content from Europe, Asia, Africa, and now right here in the USA. Watch us via Roku on your smart TV. Submit your own content to 1530 Entertainment LLC at gmail.com. Download the Millennium TV app from the App Store to stream our shows anywhere, anytime. Millennium TV. Hello and welcome back to Millennium News TV 24-7. Here is the continuation of today's headlines. Thank, Thank you. you. In a makeshift maternity ward in the basement of a Ukrainian hospital, new mother Katerina Suharakova struggled to control her emotions as she held her son while doctors upstairs Race to treat victims of Russian shelling. I was anxious, anxious about giving birth to the baby in these times, the 30-year-old said, her voice trembling. I'm thankful to the doctors who helped this baby to be born in these conditions. I believe that everything will be fine. End quote. The basement of the maternity hospital in Ukraine's coastal city of Maripol transformed into a bomb shelter and nursery as Russian forces escalated their attacks on crowded urban areas Tuesday. Workers bundled one newborn and carried him down flights of stairs to the basement where a dimly lit room cramped with beds and cribs sheltered workers and patients. Next news. The number of new coronavirus cases reported globally dropped by 16% last week, marking a month-long decline in COVID-19 infections, according to figures from the World Health Organization. In its weekly report on the pandemic issued late Tuesday, the UN Health agency also said that deaths fell by 10 percent continuing the drop in fatalities first seen last week the who said there were more than 10 million new cases and then about 60,000 deaths globally the western pacific was the only region where covid 19 increased with about a third more infections than the previous week. Deaths rose by 22% in the Western Pacific and about 4% in the Middle East, while declining everywhere else. WHO said the Omicron variant remains overwhelmingly dominant worldwide. Among virus sequences shared with the world's largest largest 
publicly accessible database, more than 99.5% were Omicron, while only 0.3% were Delta. In the last month, none of the other worrying variants, including Beta, Gamma, Lambda, or Mu, M-U, have been reported, although WHO said there were surveillance challenges in many countries. Next news. Hong Kong's leader on Wednesday said people's movements may be restricted during mandatory testing this month of the entire population for the coronavirus. As health officials reported a record 55,353 daily infections and over 100 deaths. Chief Executive Carrie Lam said authorities are still refining the plan, but that there would be no complete lockdown that would prevent entry and exit from the city. The extent of it must take into account Hong Kong's circumstances and people's needs. She told reporters, Hong Kong is planning to test its more than 7 million residents as it grapples with soaring numbers of COVID-19 cases in its worst outbreak of the pandemic, linked largely to the Omicron variant. Officials on Wednesday reported 117 deaths taking the total number above 1,000. About 80% of the deaths have occurred since late December. Most involved elderly patients who were not fully vaccinated. In quotes, we recorded about 55,000 infections today which is within our expectation. Recently, every two or three days, the number of confirmed cases is doubling, said Albert Au, a health officer with the Center for Health Protection. He said cases have not yet peaked. Next news. European Union member Malta says it suspended the processing of applications from Russian and Belarusian nationals for its so-called Golden Passport program in the wake of EU sanctions on Russia. The much-criticized program, which grants citizenship or official residence in Malta was begun as a lucrative source of income for the tiny island nation in 2014. A government statement on Wednesday also noted that nobody who gained citizenship that way has been found to be on the list of sanctioned individuals. It said sanctions now make it impossible to perform due diligence on applicants from Russia and Belarus. Under the program, Maltese passports can be obtained with 600,000 euros, which is $660,000, and three years of residency, or 750,000 euros, and 12 months of residency, plus a 700,000 euro purchase of property. But investigative reporting is recent, in recent years found that the residency requirement wasn't always fully enforced. This has been 
the daily global news update of Millennium News TV 24 7. Thank you for watching. Please log in to get the latest news on all of our social networking sites Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. On TikTok, we're Millennium News 24. Also, our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel is News Channel M24. Viewers, now both on network broadcasting, Android and iOS devices, Apple TV, Roku TV, Amazon Fire TV. Also, all smart TV platforms. Please enjoy our entertainment and latest news and views. Our Millennium TV apps, Millennium TV USA on Android. Come on, yeah. Millennium News Google, www.millenniumnews24.com. Stay with Millennium News 24. Thank you. My name is Todd David Goldfinger, and I wish you a pleasant tomorrow. Thank you. Peace.